and action. What is good, everybody? Welcome back to Joe's Card Stash, and I'm up at the Burbank. What's good, everybody? Welcome back to Joe's Card Stash, and I'm at the Burbank Card Show here in Ontario, California, the biggest card show on the West Coast. We're going to walk around here, see if we can find some UFC cards, see if we can find some UFC card collectors, some dealers, talk to some people. I also have uh, 500 bucks to spend, so I'm going to try to see how many UFC cards I can buy. Should be a lot of fun. Stick around. <laughs> What's up guys, my name is Alex, also go by Doer on social media, and I am from Woodland Hills. I've been actively collecting from the end of 2023 till now, but I got put onto the hobby back in like 2021. I have to say tops, mainly because I'm a big Fanatics guy, and Fanatics Live and all that, I kind of, you know, I'm embracing what they're going to bring to the hobby, so I'm going to go with tops. It is, this is my first one. I got here like 30 minutes ago, so I've only been able to go through four aisles, but so far, so good. Not as much UFC as we wanna see, but we'll definitely you know, go to the UFC. God Cardfather, is it, or Godfather? Cardfather, all right, that's how new I am. I'm primarily gonna look for any low numbered, like one of 10s, one of 25s. I, I noticed that I've started to gravitate towards that serial number. I like collecting bookends. Um, other than that, some Silvas maybe. Favorite fighter, Anderson Silva. Hi, my name is Armando Gomez. I've been collecting UFC cards since the release of Round 4 in 2010. This is my first time to any card show. Well, I saw that there's different uh, grading services provided here, so I came to grade some cards. Of course. Uh, right here, we have a 2019 Finest Islam Makachev uh, Rookie Plate. Uh, this is the black version, uh, numbered one of one. Uh, to the left of it, we have the 2011 uh, Finest Charles Oliveira um, Plate Insert, also one of one. And from that same set, we also have a John Jones uh, autograph. And then I have a full set of uh, gold from 2011 Finest Inserts, uh, but the ones I want to grade today are the John Jones, the 
uh, Anderson Silva and the GSP. Um, to the left of that, there's a 2020 uh, Red Ink uh, first year autograph of Israel Adesanya. Yeah. I'll also be sending in a couple of Mighty Mouse. He's one of my favorite card, favorite fighters to PC. Um, I have three of the uh, 2011 Moment of Truth uh, rookie autograph cards. Uh, right above it, I have the 2011 Finest uh, printing plate um, of Demetrius Johnson as well. And then to the left of that, another first year card. Um, this is the insert of Kid Yamamoto versus uh, Demetrius Johnson. Uh, this one's a Ruby, by the way, number to eight. And then I have a couple more Charles Oliveira cards. Uh, these two uh, to the right are actually uh, the Octofractor, the Rubies, numbered to eight each. And then I also have a gold version of it. At Mondo MMA Cards. Hi, my name's Roger, also known as Roger the UFC card guy. It's actually my second time. It's pretty good, pretty good uh, vibe. Uh, not too much UFC cards, but the ones that are here are like big ones. Um, just a little bit before Prism came out, so I say like about three years about. Uh, John Jones, always gonna be John Jones. Uh, just, just looking to see what I can add to the PC, you know. I actually added a couple of good ones today, so. For sure. So, so I got this one. This is one of my favorite Bruce Bufferados, 2010 Leaf. This one's purple out of 25. I don't know if you can see the okay, number right there. Nice. Of course, the, the, the guy of the, the weekend, Ilya, the new champ. So I got the mezzanine tie-dye at a 25 gem mint 10. I have the octagon side tie-dye, SGC 9. Then I got gold, uh, national treasure at a 10. This guy, this guy, I don't know if you know him. His name's Connor, Connor McGregor. This one is uh, kind of my favorite museum collection just because it's so hard to get 10. And uh, obviously gold always goes a long way. This is my favorite John Jones autograph that I got. Obviously, because it says the uh, youngest champion ever. Here's another John Jones auto I got. Near mint eight, but you know, it's a patch auto, so kind of expected. This one though, the Sean Strickland, patch autograph, gold out of 10, gem mint 10. Pop one, I'm pretty sure you you ain't gonna find another one. And then I got my two Anderson Silva early autographs right here. Pop three, and I got two out of three that are that are graded. And then these are the two that I picked up today. I got the 
John Jones Pulsar out of 25 flashbacks. Love the flashbacks. And then I have 21 debut Prism knockout insert out of 25 Mojo SGC 10. It's a couple of things I got, you know. Uh, Eric Larson on Instagram. I'm the UFC card father. And in Facebook, I'm just Eric Larson, uh, part of, I don't know, eight or ten different UFC card groups, have a couple of my own, and a proud member of several other large ones. Uh, started in 2008, uh, pre uh, Tops, and when Tops round one hit in 2009, I went in fee first and I'm still struggling to get out of the water. It's been one hell of a show. I'd encourage anyone that collects UFC cards to, to come to the next one. I'll be at the next one, which will be in August of this year in Anaheim. Uh, it's been a phenomenal experience. Uh, great UFC fans. Uh, we had a ton of UFC stuff here. Uh, we're down in the last couple hours of the show. So we're packing up on some stuff, but we had so much great stuff and so many great customers. Uh, so many people that had told me they would come see me and they showed up. And so it was wonderful to meet people that I've known for years. I was here with MMA Cardboard for a couple days and Luis and I had a fantastic time. He and I have known each other for 15 years, never once spoke to each other. It's only been through Messenger and and chatting through an old MMA website that we belong to that's, that's defunct now for a lot of years, but it's a, such a wonderful community and a great experience at Burbank. I will 100% be back. Tops by at least a little margin. No, I'm a Tops guy. Uh, been collecting Tops, obviously. They had the license from 2009 to 2020. Uh, picked up a few Paninis along the way. It just wasn't my uh, cup of tea, but i um, super happy to see Tops come back and get the license and can't wait for Chrome to come out this year. I don't consider it that it's going to skyrocket in the next five years. I think it's going to continue to go up and up and up. I think there's a very good uh, possibility that once people start buying Tops products, that were not around the hobby in 2009, 10, in the early years. They're going to start having an interest in those early year products because uh, Tops will, will deliver some phenomenal products uh, this year and into next year for sure. I think they've got a five year contract, so we're going to see a lot of Tops. I'm buying it myself uh, as much as I can and uh, looking forward to the product. And I see a very positive long-term future for the product. Uh, when people start understanding how limited a product that Topps had over the year for the most part, uh, they're gonna realize the rarity of the stuff is just amazing uh, level of rarity. And they're gonna wanna get some of the earliest stuff from 2009, 2010, 2011, through 2013 and the knockout years uh, the bloodline years, the finest years, the chrome years, uh, museum products, uh, when they realize in, in the next couple years when those get launched by Tops, 
they're definitely going to want to go find the, uh, the older stuff. Wow, you know, it's, uh, I'm going to have to look for a Kleenex because I might shed a tear, but I sold the 2014 Triple Threads Whale of Conor McGregor. There's only four in the world. Uh, I had one, and I know exactly where the other three are. And now the fourth one is with an extremely happy collector who probably will never let the thing see the, the light of day. I don't know if it'll end up on social media at any point in its lifetime, uh, but that was a tough one to let go. But I, I felt like the collector uh, not only offered a very reasonable price uh, for a card that you really can't determine uh, a comp on because there's only four in the world and and the two and it was a redemption so it never hit eBay beyond a redemption going to eBay uh, one guy has two of them and I remember when he bought them and they were private transactions and the other guy that has one picked up picked it up at a card show uh, probably six or nine months ago and uh, it, it was hard to determine a fair value so I had to determine something that was going to be uh, something that would keep me and the family happy and and uh, pay for a Costco sized, Sam Club size box of Kleenex because I'm going to have some regrets to let it go. But when you've got 450, 500,000 UFC cards, you should let a few go. You've got to let some into the market. You've got to let some other collectors enjoy the things that you've enjoyed for a long time, but letting any one of one go is, is always a little bit painful, but uh, I'm sure it's gonna make the new owner very happy.
Okay, as you can tell, I'm back in the Joe's Card Stash studio. Uh, I wanted to show off the cards I bought at the show, but I didn't want to do it at the show. There's too much noise and people and stuff like that. So I thought I'd come back here and give you guys a close look at all the things I picked up for my PC. I'm not going to blab on too much. Um, this video, I'm sure, is already pretty long. So I'm going to get right into it and show you what I picked up. Number one, as, as you know, I feel like most of you guys know, I'm very, very interested in collecting round one, tops round one cards, uh, trying to get them graded at PSA and trying to get uh, PSA nines. Uh, I got these from the UFC Cardfather. I'm going to tell you right now, almost all the cards I got are from the UFC Cardfather. Uh, he just has everything that I'm looking for personally. So a big part of this show was me meeting up with him and buying things from him. Uh, he, if you guys don't know, he has one of the biggest collections of UFC cards, or the early top stuff in the world. But uh, he lives in Mexico. He doesn't ship. He doesn't sell on eBay. So you really have to meet him in person or wait for him to come into town, come into it for a show or something like that. So this was my opportunity to buy a bunch of stuff from him. So that's mainly what I did. I brought 500 bucks with me to the show. And uh, you know I was willing to buy anything that I saw at the tables, but I knew uh, the UFC card father was gonna have a bunch of cards I wanted and most of the money was gonna go to him, which I'm happy to do. Uh, so first card, uh, Hoist Gracie Rookie. Uh, round one is a grail card for me. Uh, I don't know if it will grade a nine like I want it to. It's a little, it looks a little rough, but we'll see. You never know. You know, you get the right PSA grader. Uh, very happy to have this. You know, if, if it does get a nine, I'm super excited. Second grail card. This is another huge one that I want. GSP rookie. Uh, same thing. Round one. Um, same thing. I'm, I'm really hoping for a nine. You know, it looks probably closer to an eight, but we will see if it doesn't get a nine. You know, I'll probably sell it and try again. Keep, keep trying to find clean copies of these. If anybody out there knows of really, really clean round one copies of cards, please let me know. I'm always looking. It's really hard to find these in good condition. Uh, but, you know, these are, these are pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful, so we will see. Next card, um, Charles Oliveira. I'm just a big fan. I've always wanted his rookie card. This is a, it's out of 288. Um, I believe this is... 2011 knockout, um, 2010 knockout, I believe. Um, yeah, just just uh, he's a goat. I wanted I wanted one of his cards. Uh, again, really clean copy. The main thing with all of these is I wanted raw cards. I didn't want graded cards. I wanted raw cards that I could grade myself that I would hope would get you know high grades because that's what I'm really always trying to go for with the older stuff is trying to get high grades where the pops are really low. Um, so, very cool card. Very stoked to have that. Next one is Demetrius Johnson, 2011 uh, Topps Finest. One of my favorite sets. Love this set. Love Mighty Mouse. Another big grail card for me. This is the X Fractor. It's numbered out of 388. Again, uh, you know, if I can get a nine on this, this will stay with me forever. Very stoked. Love this photo too. It's a great photo of Mighty Mouse. Um, so, yep, uh, Mighty Mouse Rookie. Right there, I mean, those five cards or four cards or whatever, I'm ecstatic. Uh, next, Rose Nami Yunus, uh, Rookie card from Knockout, uh, what year? 2015 Knockout. Uh, this is one of our only rookie cards that has the rookie logo, which was important to me. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a newer guy, so I like the rookie logo. I liked when they started putting them on the cards. So this was really cool to have. Um, uh, I photographed Rose, that's why I PC her. I like her as a fighter and everything, but you know, the fact that I got to spend some time with her, that's a big part of why I collect cards is you know, people I've met, I wanna have memorabilia from the, chance, you know, the, the time I, I spent with them. So yeah, if you, if you, I've made a video about this if you guys wanna watch it, it's a couple videos ago and it talks about why I collect certain people. And Rose is one of them. And uh, always wanted a rookie card. This is a numbered version of it. Again, I'm hoping this grades pretty well. Very, very cool card. And this one is my first one of one. We have Mike Quicksand Pile, uh, Topps Finest 2011. Again, beautiful set. I didn't realize this, but the red cards are one of ones in this set. You can see it right there. Um, again, Mike Pile is someone I photographed for UFC Magazine a long time ago. So, you know, he's not the most popular fighter. So I thought, yeah, maybe I could get a one of one of him because. They're not super, super expensive. And of course, the UFC Cardfather had one. So, 
you know, my first one of one. What can I say? This is super, super cool, and it's a guy that I, you know, met and spent some time with. Uh, so very, very cool. My first one of one. Uh, the next card was not from the UFC card father. This is from um, MMA Cardboard, Lewis. Uh, another guy I collect, Dan Hardy. Again, someone I photographed for UFC Magazine a long time ago. Uh, really like his, his YouTube channel as well. Um, I wanted to find a, a card of his where he had an auto, but he signed it with uh, his nickname, The Outlaw. I really think that's cool when they put you know, nicknames and stuff like that in the, in the autographs. I really want to get a Max Holloway where he wrote Bless, but those are really expensive. Uh, this is the red ink from 2000, what is this? 2011, I think this is Moment of Truth. And uh, the red ink out of 15, um, and just, you know, so cool when he does that. I hope Topps brings that back. I hope they do the red autographs uh, and have them write special things on them, you know, on the lower numbered stuff, because it, it really makes this stuff cool. Very, very excited to pick this card up. Super cool. Thank you, Lewis. Uh, Lewis was right next to um, the UFC card father for the first two days, I think, first two or three days. And... Uh, They've known each other for like 15 years, and this was the first time they met in person, which is really, really cool. So the last card, and I didn't buy this. This was just thrown in, and it's another one of one. So I got my second one of one, and uh, Eric, the UFC card father, threw this in for free. It's a Luke Rockhold um, canvas uh, memorabilia, one of one from, what is this? 2016 Knockout. Again, I collect Luke because I photographed him, uh, and, you know, this is so cool. It's a one-of-one. -one. I actually really like the canvas, um, canvas memorabilia. I think they're pretty cool. It's, it's uh, you know, a little piece of where they were fighting. I think that's awesome. Um, is it from a specific fight? Uh, not from a specific fight, but still, very, very cool. The fact that he just gave me a one-of-one -one just shows you the type of person Eric is. Um, so... Thank you again, Eric. Thank you again, Lewis. Thank you again to everybody who met with me and let me interview you and just talk to UFC cards with me. That's the one thing I will say about these shows. If you guys get a chance to go to these shows, it's so cool to meet these people in, in person and just have one-on-one -on -one conversations with people that are passionate about what you're passionate about. It is just a blast, and I had so much fun. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I did my best. It's really hard to film these things, and uh, you know, let me know in the comments if, if you thought I did a good job. I am going to go to the Burbank Card Show in August, and I'm going to try to do something different with that one. You know, let me know if you guys have any ideas, what you'd like to see. Uh, but that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.